Hello everyone, I am Neoxenuk, and this is my Let's Play of Neverwinter Nights 2, Zor Storm of Zahir. So, yeah, um, I've been wanting to do, I've actually wanted to start with Neverwinter 1 with the main campaign, but, um, uh, well, for some reason I can't find the first disc of the, uh, box set that I have, so... And I didn't want to start Neverwinter Nights 2 without doing Neverwinter Nights 1, so Storm of Zay here is like the side story campaign of this game. Plus, it's the only one of the whole thing that I didn't complete, so this is what I'll do. And we'll... So we will create our characters for it. Now, I have like a plan for all... In this particular version of the game you can create an entire party of adventures using the 3.5 edition rules of the Dungeons and Dragons system. Uh, yeah. So I have created a party of uh, mostly humans. And we'll start with the leader of the group who I'll make a woman. She'll be a I'm thinking this will be a little bit counterintuitive, because I think the last time I tried making this game, I did use a bard, and I made him uh, like a Captain Picard kind of look-alike, but this time I'll do something different. Make her... her stats would suggest sort of a thin wisp of a woman who is still very tough and very nimble. So, yeah. You know, someone who, if you looked at her physically, wouldn't strike you as a leader. But she will be. Uh, someone a little bit younger. Uh, maybe? Yeah, we'll go with this. So, yeah, we'll uh, do something with her. Sure. Yeah, we'll do this. She looks a little bit funny with the hair off. We'll do this. Definitely. We'll go with this. Where is the hair accessory? What does he even consider the hair accessory to be? She will be a bard. Neutral. She does not care. She will be a follower of Wauquin, uh, basically a god, uh, actually a goddess of merchants, trade, money. Basically, when you, if you're into politics and you talk about the, and you hear the words the invisible hand of the market, they, Wauquin is actually a name for that in the Forgotten Realms, basically. So, bards are naturally charismatic. She's not particularly wise, quite brash, frighteningly intelligent, tough, and quite nimble, but not very strong. I would take natural leader, but I've been told that it doesn't quite work very well, so we're taking uh, talent instead for... because she's a bard. our skills. 
She is the people person of this particular group. She will have most of those skills. So it's the ability to remain hidden. Because that's a skill that most people in this particular group will have. I think only one person doesn't have the hide and move silently. Uh, she's not afraid of picking a few pockets where necessary. And she's very good at throwing jabs at uh, the noobs. Uh, the foots. Uh, where is it? Looking for you. There you are. Silver palm. And uh, point blank shot. So yeah, she is not to be in combat at all. She's uh, that's why she has uh, the group of rubes to do that for her. Cure Minor. Daze is a good spell to have, especially all at early levels. Flare, and everyone's going to have resistance, so... And Light. She'll get it next level anyway. This game starts you at, like, level 4 or something. Fra Bora. Oleand. I like that name. Watian. Leon Watian. Uh, we'll write a little blurb for her. Uh, smart and brash. Uh, uh oh, the music cut. Something went wrong. I hope not. Oh, there it goes. Uh, smart and brash, Oleand is a talented bard and capable leader. Uh, her wit and charm. Says and love of uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, if I just say love of money, that just seems too obvious, but, uh, just like the whole process of, um, love of trade. Uh, the free market. Made her first gold piece. Uh, and has set out to a world of adventure. Wealth and prosperity. Yeah. I won't give her a voice just because I don't want to, you know, bother with going through all of them. But they are very fine voices and all. But it's meh. Well met, friend. I've got some bad news. I guess that's hardly surprising given the other bad luck that's happened the last few days. But anyhow, it seems like the last it seems like a few pages somehow got torn out of the vigilance passenger manifest. I'll need you to sign the manifest again for you and the rest of your party. Okay, where is it? It's right uh, by the door that leads below docks, below decks. You can't miss it. Uh, I have a lot of unusual things been happening on this ship. I uh, I hear and hit there. Some of the food we took at the last stop is spoiled. A number of our drinking barrels got ruptured. Just a few nights ago, Kellen, a good man, got himself drunk and pitched headlong overboard. Sunk before we could save him, poor soul. But don't you worry, Vigilant's been through worse in past. We'll be at, uh, Samargol shortly. 
so we can get no supplies there, fix some problems. All right, farewell. Well then, sign the manifest and get below decks. Traveler, storm's brewing. I doubt Umberly's, Umberly means to take it easy on us, but don't worry, the, village, the vigilant has weathered far worse. One of the new features in Storm of Zahir is the party conversation system. Look alive, you lovers! Passengers on deck! Yeah, they'll keep doing it. Party conversation. You'll see the portraits of all party members in the, co in the conversation window and, select, window and select the portraits to change the speaker. When a party member is not the speaker and has a response option that is different from the speaker, a speech bubble will appear in that portrait. It's actually, on, it's actually a fairly clever thing that they did, but yeah. Dialogue choices will vary greatly depending on your party member's attributes such as skills, class, race, gender, alignment, deity, abilities, and more. Be sure to create a well-balanced par party to have more choices in conversations, uh, that which I did, although mine doesn't have much variety in terms of... Oh, I don't like this. In terms of... Yeah, I know. Exploration mode. In terms of race, because uh, I'll have three humans and one dwarf. Mostly just uh, just because I need the extra feet. Anyway, register my party. Uh, which means we'll get to create three new characters. So, yeah. We'll do this again. Alright. Uh, this one will be a little bit taller. Um, he should also be a bit thin and wiry. He is an archer, after all. Uh, yeah, he will be a bit tan. Or rather, somewhere... Somewhere, yeah. Uh, his character build I've labeled as, uh... Someone who, I mean, he worships a god named Ubtau, which is like a Jurassic type uh, deity in a particular region of Forgotten Realms. Anyway, um. Not blue. It'll be dark. I like these. Yay. Hair color. Mmm. No. It'll be dark. I like that. That's good. I should probably judge based off of the different faces and see what we get. Uh thinking someone who looks pretty gruff. Chef, yes! No facial hair. No facial hair. You know what, fine. That's what I'll do. Yeah. Try to make it the same color. There we go. I don't know why I'm fiddling with his hair color. Okay, so, um... Yeah, this is good. Air accessory. It'll be blue. You'll be a ranger. Really good one, too. Lawful neutral. Creator of the Cholt, founder of the Mezzo, father of the dinosaurs. Any of you who might be familiar with this game will know what might be coming. At least not until level 6, though. 
Yeah, he gets a dinosaur companion. He is the wisdom behind... Uh, uh, what was her name? He is the wisdom behind the bard's uh, decision-making. Also looks like he's pretty smart. Kind of toughish. Wild child. And daunted explorer. Interested in nothing but seeing the new world. Uh, the world around him, or some such, anyway. So, yes, he's also going to be a competent crafter. Hunter, all round trapper. Silently search. Yes, this character in particular, more than any others, is designed to work in this game. In fact, he'll have to, by necessity, he'll have to be kind of at the top of the uh, character chain. I mean, just because it t would take advantage of his stats, which we need. Uh, am I missing something? Survival. Oh, yeah. Alright, good there. Favorite enemy, Goblinoids. And Foots! We need a weapon focus. Uh, let's see. He's going to use a longbow. And also take point blank shot. What does that even do for him? I mean, you know what it does in the PNP game. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. It's basically point blank shot from uh, and precise shot from the PNP game. That's why I wanted it. Let's just call him Gus. Gus Erlson. Wise and thought, uh, wise and thoughtful, and with an exploratory one. Plus six to one. Under the world. Indeed. Uh, sure. Seems so incomplete, though. Thoughtful with an exploratory wanderlust, he seeks to wander the world. Hmm. within the chop. Let's see, why did he leave his, uh, his tribe within the chop? The chop is basically like uh, the Amazon, I think. It's filled with dinosaurs and uh, a lot of creatures we'll be seeing in this game, actually. So I think the area we're going to is basically either adjacent to or actually in the Chult. Hmm. So, in a sense, he's actually going back home. Or at least to his home country, I guess. I'll let this tribe with an... Expectations of the leaders in order. 
in order to find full f spiritual fulfillment. Yeah. yeah, that sounds a bit better. It's incomplete, but it leaves a lot of area. This was a starting character that would definitely be a uh, way to bring him in. Anyway, let's bring Gus in. Oh yeah, he's at the bottom. Yeah, we'll figure out all this soon. Alright, next up is the party mage and thief. Also human. Tall and kind of again. A little bit more imposing, actually, even a little bit more imposing than the uh, ranger, who is actually far more dangerous. Let's see, I believe Thayans have a bit of a. Yeah, something like that. No. <laughs> it would fit his charisma. You know what? Fair enough. This looks like a red wizard if I ever saw one. Yeah. Not no. Uh, no. No, we're not doing that again. How come you won't give me a hair, uh, facial hair selection for him? You know what? Yeah, let's do this. It reminds me of, uh... Oh, what was his name? It's been so long since I've seen it. Uh, the Gangs of New York movie. Actually, let's see what uh, hair he has. something different. This will be red for reasons that will be apparent later. He is a rogue. At least he will be. He's actually going to be a rogue wizard. Neutral evil. Of Shar. And his stats. Uh, very dexterous. Only a little bit healthy. Definitely should not be in the thick of melee combat. Like, ever. Never. And, yeah. He has no charisma. He is a foreigner. Oh, skills. So many, so many skills. Alright. Concentration, because he's a mage. Disabled Divas. 
heal. Hide. Listen. Not that he'll be any good at it. Because he won't be taking any ranks in it forever. Lock. Uh, search and spellcraft. Surprisingly, doesn't uh, slide of hand uh, because I already have someone else who has that skill. He just doesn't care to do something like that. Uh, UMD and tumble. Yep. So, uh, able learner and skill focus spellcraft. Where are you? Spell craft. Oh, where's the little spell craft? Tiny little spell craft. Where are you? Do, 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 do. Uh, Frank. Frank, uh... Harfitcher. Just because. Interested in magic since he was a small boy. He's still. Book from which he learned. Uh, from the former from the former head fat master of uh, a slave workshop within Thay. He has had to spend much of his youth with it. Uh, flitting from city to city to evade the culture of his former owners. Till he managed to find himself on the other side of Faerun. Learning all he could, could on his way. Since then, and he's been in fighting his way. Power using the dark magics of neat. All right, Frank. Frank Harfitcher. Fantastic. All right, and last but not least, the dwarf. Uh, shield dwarf. Uh, she'll be a bit short for a dwarf. Wide, she is healthy and powerful. Uh, she's fair, but not that fair. Sh 
sure. So how many faces do we got? Not many. More than I expected. She still has basically no charisma. So... She would probably ha have not much or minimal hair just because as a warrior... be inefficient. So she would be bald. I like her eyes blue. Actually, I'll make them green. Uh, all that is relevant. Her hair accessory that she definitely has is yellow. She is a fighter. Yes. She is neutral good. She follows uh, Marth Hammer doing. Yes. Finder of trails, watch over watchers, the watchful eye. And she is strong, tough, more, more above average intelligence, uh, quite wise. And the worst charisma in the group. The only one with any is uh, is the leader. She is a combat veteran. She's seen a few battles. Oh uh, yeah, she doesn't have many skill points, uh, but she is skilled at the forge. Feats will be weapon focus. Where uh, is it? Dwarven war axe and uh, toughness. All right, because she's a fighter. All right, toughness. There we are. Yeah, so she has she has scads of hit points. Crank. No. Woman, her. That sounds good. Trained at the fort. Forged by father and his father. Before. Other. She has taken to the art of war and com combat from the day she was born. One. She loves every, every. She loves every bit of it, but mostly she enjoys fighting. Uh, uh, camaraderie? I don't know how to spell that. Hold on a moment. Uh, camaraderie. Are you sure? Huh. 
Fair enough. Oh no. Okay. All right. Uh, the game crashed. Fantastic. Thanks, Neverwinter. I don't know why it couldn't just let me use a windowed mode or something, but whatever. Alright, at least we won't have to go through the entire uh, creation process for all of them. How it does automatically save them for me. Well met, I've got some bad news. Yeah, we did this already. All right, so the other one was Gus. So, but we will need to make the, uh, the last one. We'll try to go through this a little bit more quickly. She was a bit short, a bit girthy. Uh, yeah, then I made her bald, too. I didn't use this face, but this is good. This is fine. This is good. She had a yellow accessory. Twas a fighter. Neutral good. Doing uh, fifteen wisdom, fifteen constitution. Combat veteran. Uh, master at forgery and. Sounds good. Glorin Kivna. Fair enough. Okay. So, yeah. Anyway, what was I saying? Oh, yes. Um. Let's see. She was right. Raised in the art of war from birth. worth. Raised to work the for forge with. Beside her father and her father's father. Father. And trained for cotton. Earliest days. Uh, 
because she led every mo of it, including the camera. I believe that's how it's spelled. I certainly hope it is because I didn't write it down. Or is it that? Uh, wait! It's my cell phone will save me! Uh, yeah, this is just one of those words that uh, you just have phone wasn't so bloody slow. Uh, yeah, seriously, this thing is so slow for some reason. Yeah, C-O-M-R-A-D-E-R-Y. Fair enough. Alright, you can go now. Including the com with those she fights with and love and loyalty of those she fights for. Or she left them out. Ends with the blessing of her clan. In order to... Oh, why did she leave her? In order to find her identity. Yeah, that sounds good. Lawyerin. All right. All right. We have a full party now. And we're all starting at level four. Silly elf. Alright, so, in terms of powers, I could probably fiddle with a lot of things while I, uh, track, defensive casting, stealth, detect, inspire courage, fantastic. Oh, there it is. Actually, our president is coming. Okay. Yep, and now everyone has a bonus plus one to attack and damage rolls, I believe. Yes. And now she shut it off. There it goes. Not too bad. Alright, so she is leveling up just as... Uh, Actually, and that and that I'll probably end up reorganizing like this whole thing and I might actually just end up saving up here just so I can see if I can pilfer using my uh, slight o hand because that might be entertaining oh yeah actually I need to decide these things too a lot of these will like determine just like some default things that because uh, there is a lot of AI control on this Monster ally damage. Warlock one round hideous blow. Warlocks use hideous blow in two rounds. I don't even know why that's a thing, but whatever. 
Enemies auto cast buffs. They should. That should uh, raise the difficulty a little bit. I currently have it on hardcore difficulty setting because that's the way I play all of them. So they'll have long and medium buffs on them when we meet when they meet cuz that's uh only fair auto set of companion behaviors global knockdown is on self buff or heal the party their character will buff or heal the group when the command is given uh yeah sure so not attack the enemies after being issued a follow command. Yeah, that sounds good. Ally damage. Oh, boy, there we go. Effect. Auto summon. Yes! Do so. Auto summon familiars. Yes! Do so. Disable melee attacks for her. Actually, yes. Disable. Back away. That's a, this is for her specifically now. Ranged weapons are on. She doesn't have the ability to polymorph. Uh, but I'll allow them to turn that on for all of them. Actually... Yeah, that's always on party. On combat mode usage. Videos abilities, combat abilities, uh, healing and curing items. Character will not use item powers during combat. Yes, you can. I want you to. Also, dispel, because yes. Uh, use scaled casting, because yes. Automatic hiding. See everyone but the uh, uh, everyone but the dwarf has the ability to be stealthy at all times. Uh, I'll set that individually, however. For her, I'll uh, yeah. Everyone auto pick up items. I might change that later. Let's see, she shouldn't do any of that. Everyone will be... Oh no, this guard distance. Defend Master, yes! She's not gonna bother with that, she's not gonna bother with that. Her follow distance will be far. Character will utilize default artificial intelligence. Not you don't. Yes, actually use artificial intelligence. Fantastic! Now let's level up. Get our characters ready. See, she is all barred all the time. Let's see, I don't level up intimidate. Hide. Of course, lower and perform. Uh, sleight of hand, taunt, and listen, of all things. All right, spells. So yeah, this is going to be, her entire purpose in this is to be able to cast uh, spells that uh, debuff or enhance the party. That is her entire function here, so she, yeah, move fear is going to be an important one, as is uh, cure light wounds, So that's how she'll fulfill her party duty. 
There aren't really a lot of like area buff spells at this level. But we're starting out level four. I'll be able to pick up a few more. So level three. Taunt. And taunt. Okay, what did I screw up? I goofed somewhere. Crap. Okay. So, one, two, three. Okay, she's human, has 6 plus intelligence modifier, so she should be 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, yeah, I see what I did. No, just cancel. I'll come back to you. No, 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 I should. Exciting game, huh? But hey, once things going, they uh, will actually, you know, seriously get going. So, one, two. Yeah out an extra skill somewhere. Here's bluff. Policy. Hide. I skip in order to get intimidate. Hmm. What should I skip? I'm even getting a rank in intimidate. I guess I should just put it and listen. Yeah. No, I put it in there for some reason. Ah, it just bothers me so much. You know what? I'm going to risk a game crash momentarily and go and check something. Because I had a specific character plan. Uh, there was like a whole thing that I did. And it bothers me when things don't go quite according to that. Because this is like the lengths that I go in order to do stuff like this. I do this with my D&D characters all the time. So... Uh, level up from two to three, where I gain. Okay, so I didn't put it in taunt, so my thing I wrote down is actually wrong. So I miss a point in taunt. Alright, that clears things up. Fantastic. Next feat is stealthy because uh, that is a valuable skill to be good at. More 
first level spells. Iron Horn, uh, creatures in the area of effect knocks them off their feet if they fail and impose strength check. Spells an effective strength of 20. Creatures that fail to check, they're knocked prone for one round. That is a very good, uh... Yeah, this one's a very good one. Uh-oh. Oh, bloody hell. Huh. Well, we've been at this for a while. How about this? I'll uh, finish leveling up all the characters, and then we'll come back when we're ready to actually continue the game, because, yeah, it's been almost an hour now. All right, see you next time. Take care, and goodbye.